Hey guys, we're back. We're talking about butt stuff. We are, and I think it's we should leave it at that. <laughs> Chris doesn't want us to know he's done butt stuff. No, uh, I mm, <laughs> disagree. Or would you? Or okay, he's okay, fine. He's no, he's fine with you guys knowing he's done butt stuff. No, I disagree. <laughs> I'm not winning here, am I? <laughs> I give. I give up. My ice is sharp, but my wit is sharper. This is a Kirby server, you can't swear. Heck, you're on thin fucking ice. Oh, I just froze to my <laughs> death. That's unfortunate for you. It really Get is. Get that checked out. Yeah, you see, I, t I tried. The doctor said I froze of death. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what they said. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, I got a really small penis. My doctor, I went to him, he said, he, he said I'm sorry, bud, you got small cocks. I once okay, hired okay, a okay. prostitute. She asked if there was a finder's fee. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, I actually recently went to a comedy show. Oh, work. Oh, really? Yeah, have you ever heard of Taylor Tomlinson? Yes, I, I have. have. Not. Yeah, my that sister's a great. My sister's a big fan. And for some reason, she thought me and my dad wouldn't like it. No, Taylor's cool. Yeah, we thought it would be so. Like, that was that was big boomy. So we thought it was because she'd be like a super huge like lib or something, because my dad and I seemed to like lean a bit more conservative. And so we were like, we were expecting like Samantha B or something when we walked in. No, the answer is no. No, I can tell you right. no, that's an insult to Taylor if you compare her to that. <laughs> But yeah, the uh, yeah, it was, we saw her show on net, one of her shows on Netflix, and it was good. And we were like, "Yeah, let's let's see the show." We got the tick. We so she had like two tickets, one for my mom, one for her, and we just barely got tickets. Like, like I kid you not, a half hour before the show started, because okay. scalpers were being dicks and you know scalping. So. I want to say she has, like, pretty recently had a Netflix special. I haven't watched it yet. But I loved watching just, like, clips of some of her best bits. Yeah. And I wouldn't say she's really, like, a heavy political comedian. No, she's not. But I think she generally avoids it. Which I appreciate. Yeah. Like, her I'm humor all is good without doing that. Like, yeah. you can have funny political comedy. I mean, our government is a joke. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> There's other things to talk about. Yeah, seriously. There's other things to talk about. And without being like Amy Schumer. Yeah. Who also, from what I understand, is not a political comedian, but she's just not funny. <laughs> so. I, mean, I got... I gotta find new comedians. I haven't watched. The last one I watched was like Gabriel Iglesias or like an old uh, Chris Rock skit. Oh, Mike, you wanna talk about liking old comedians? All the comedians I watch are fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. I, I watch. For the viewers, I watched... we shed a single tear because Gilbert Gottfried is now on that list. He is. My, uh, my condolences to all. To his family and friends. We lost. Bob Saget, Gilbert Gottfried, and some like Louis Segal, I think his name was, all in the same year. All yeah. Betty White. All oh, Betty White. year for comedy. We did lose Betty White. We did lose Betty. No, she she did not. She lived to be a hundred. She lived yeah. for ni 99 full years and for about 24 leap years. Dad's like an extra two, 24 days. She made it to a hundred. Congratulations, to 100. Betty. Can tell happy a hundredth birthday, Betty. But yeah, it just... Although, to uh, be fair, 
having Time Magazine print a limited edition uh, magazine about your 100th birthday and then dying before that birthday comes to pass is some legendary comedic timing on Betty's part. Indeed. She just said, no, I don't think I will. <laughs> I've had just about enough of this place. Yeah. Haven't uh, we all? Oh, I was going to say, I would recommend Burt Kreischer. Love him a lot. Mm. Most famous for his um, bit called The Machine, where he accidentally got conscripted into the Russian Mafia as part of a college course. <laughs> what? <laughs> And uh, the only thing he could say in Russian was, I am the machine. <laughs> uh, and the Mafia really liked that. <laughs> he's yeah, a, he's most... a funny, funny guy. But yeah, he and Taylor Tomlinson are probably my two most watched comedians. Yeah, for me, it's... Uh, the comedians I was referring to... War, when I said that all the, the, the comedians I watch are dead, were, was uh, George Carlin and Rodney Dangerfield. Oh, George Carlin. Love George Carlin. That's, th that's the strong third. <laughs> oh, he's great. Shit, piss, fuck, cock, cock like a motherfucker, and tits. Seven dirty words you can't say on TV. <laughs> he was a smart dude, too. He, he really was. He, there was a really funny bit he did where he managed to condense the Ten Commandments into just two. <laughs> Which were? I don't... I remember he managed to condense, like, don't steal, don't kill, don't adulterate. It said he could... He managed to condense all those into mind your fucking business. <laughs> And I don't remember what the other one was. Well, yeah, because all of those have to do with other people. Yeah. Right? So if you don't mess with other people and don't get in their business, then you don't break those commandments. Exactly. So yeah, you condense all those into one. And I can't remember what the other one was. There was one that Jesse uh, showed me that was like about airplane, about air, about like how wild airports are. I don't remember details about that one. I just remember that was funny. But in terms it's of, like, very... recent comedians, my most recent comedian has to be, uh... And... Oh my god, what's his name? The... Um, who played Spider-Ham in Spider-Man? Oh, John Mulaney. Thank you, yes, John Mulaney. Oh, yeah. John Mulaney's pretty good, too. I, I quite like John Mulaney. <laughs> yeah. He's... Like, not only is does he have some just, like, genuinely funny material, but his delivery, oh, I he, think, is he, what just cinches it. The way he uses his voice is exceptional. Oh, yeah. Yo, did you see the bit when he, uh, he, uh, he was talking about when he got a prostate exam? <laughs> I don't yes. remember, but probably. That was so funny. That had me, like, in tears. The one that I've committed to memory is the one where... He, so him and his buddy were at like a truck stop or like a diner and they there was a jukebox there that was like four songs for a dollar so what oh, they yes. what they did was they put in like five dollars in there and they used it to play what's new pussycat over and over and over <laughs> and over again and the funny thing about What's New Pussycat is the song kind of leads into itself. So, essentially what happened was, the second time it played, people were just thinking, Huh, What's New Pussycat is a longer song than I remember it. <laughs> they just thought it was a weirdly long song with a, with a dip in the middle. And then, when it gets down to four times, <laughs> they're this thing, they start to get a little suspicious. It's either played twice or four times. So they're starting to get a little sick of it. <laughs> And then, I think like the seventh or eighth time <laughs> after that, it did not play What's New Pussycat. It, in fact, instead played, uh, what's his name? The Tom Jones's is not unusual, which, long has it been debated whether you can make a man cry over John over Tom Jones's It's Not Unusual. And the answer is yes, but it must be preceded by eight playings of What's New Pussycat. Yeah. 
And then like once, and then then once this once it, it's not unusual, uh, ended, it immediately just blah blah blah. What's new, pussy cat? And then the whole dialogue like, God damn it! <laughs> I want to say it was John Mulaney who got his pit bull high as a kite on accident. Oh, like it got into his into his like wheat brownies. Yes. I yes, know what you're talking about. It ate the whole thing in his backpack. I don't think it was him. I thought it was just some random guy on Twitter. I, although I, I did not pay I, attention. I, I remember that one. I remember that one. I, I, the whole time I was like, isn't it like that? Isn't it like poison to a dog? Evidently like not, because I mean it was alive. So. <laughs> Depends how much of the brownie was actually chocolate. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> I guess was not that much based on what happened. Well, you know, well, I mean, Joey's told me that, like, Trixie, his dog, has eaten, like, an entire pan of brownies. And she's still kicking, so... <laughs> Maybe it depends on the dog. <laughs> Some dogs are just built different. Seriously. <laughs> Oh yeah, look at that. Huh. Yeah, it was funny. A while ago, there was a... Uh, I saw like an hour-long Rodney Dangerfield stand-up video. It was him like outright just at a show and just doing stand-up. And it was hilarious. I don't... It was one of those things where I hadn't laughed that hard in a while. And it irritates me to no end that I cannot find it. I believe in the dream one day. Maybe. Because the easiest Rodney Dangerfield video to find is the one where he was on, like, David Letterman or something. And he was just going off with his usual stand-up routine. Which, mind you, shock of all shocks is hilarious. <laughs> the guy's whole sh The funny thing is, with Rodney Dangerfield, is that... He's not like most other, like, comedians nowadays, where they tell these, like, long, elaborate stories that, like... Is he the, the, the king of one-liners that you told is. me about? Yes. Yes. He is the... He is... He does one-liners, and exclusively one-liners. At most, his jokes go on for, like, two or three lines. <laughs> like, there's a little setup, but, like, not much, and I appreciate that because it makes it easy as hell to quote. Mm. I can just and then the rattle off. It's incredibly effective because it's very self contained. Exactly. I can just rattle off like 10 of them in a row without even really having to think to. I just need to think of like a, th like a theme and then I've got it, you know? Kirby's laying that pipe. Ha <laughs> ha! is no longer laying that pipe. Yeah, I know there's like a lot of them that are self deprecating. Mm. Like, uh, I was an ugly kid growing up, yeah, it's, what you, I was a really ugly kid, you know, I, I've, I, I, I stuck my head out a window, I got arrested for mooning, you know, real ugly kid, I would, uh, I, my, my cat, you tried to bury me in the sandbox, I was so ugly. <laughs> One time, I, my, my, my dad, he takes me to the zoo, I ask him why, he says, we, we're trying to find your real parents. <laughs> Heck, one of the zookeepers one time said, came up to him and said, Hey, thanks for bringing him back. You kidding? I was a real ugly kid. My mother never yeah, breastfed. So it's like you can have multiple one liners on the same premise. Yeah. My mother never breastfed me. She said she liked me as a friend. I feel like there has, has to be like a, a book of, of all these or something. Oh, 100%. I, I, I want it. <laughs> I remember I was actually so I, I at that time I hadn't seen uh, I hadn't seen Caddyshack yet, but they released a line of Caddyshack Funkos, and I wanted to get my hands on one of them because Rodney's in that movie and they made a Funko Pop of him. And I wanted to get my hands on that pop, not because I love the movie, but because I just wanted a Rodney Dangerfield Funko. Rodney Dangerfield. I'm Luke. Which, funny enough, the. Uh, that David Letterman 
interview he was in, he was there like with a promo shot for Caddyshack. And he was by I've far heard... one of the best parts of that movie. <laughs> I'm pretty sure David Letterman is who I'm thinking of. He's the interviewer that Sean Evans, the host of Hot Ones, looked up to. I don't remember. I don't know who Sean Evans is. Oh, you don't watch Hot Ones? No, I don't. The Hot, the hot Wing interview show? He's a fantastic interviewer. He's done interviews with many, many different celebrities, and he asks, like, deep-cut questions about like, obscure things that they did when they grow up, and they're always like, how do you know this? And he never answers that question. <laughs> and it's great. Um, and then they eat hot wings and suffer. Oh, I think you have mentioned this before, yeah. Yeah, but I... And we're gonna have to talk more about hot wings next time. Heck yeah, you...